Hello, it's Miss Heather, piano and voice teacher at Conservatory of the Ozarks, working on my study guides for my comps and orals for my master of music degree again. I'm going to read today about Paul Gearhart from my class notebook. Paul Gearhart, 1607 to 1676, Christianity's greatest hymn writer. <clears throat> Paul Gearhart was born on March 12, 1607, in Grafenheimichen, Germany, a village between Halle and Wittenberg. His father, Christian Gerhardt, was mayor of the village. When Paul was only 12, his father died, and two years later, his mother, Dorothea, was called by our Savior. Paul, his brother, Christian, and their two sisters were left without their parents at a young age. But the parents' inn continued to supply enough money for the raising and education of the children. From 1622 to 1627, Gearhart attended school at Grima, or Grima. From 1628 to 1642, he studied theology at the University of Wittenberg. During much of his youth, Germany was ravaged by the Thirty Years' War. From 1618 to 1642, 48. After the Swedish king was killed, both armies began to loot German towns. In 1637, the Swedes came to Grafenhainiken and demanded 3,000 golden war tax. The town was able to gather the amount, but the army burned the town anyway. Every house, bar barn, even the church and castle were burned to the ground. In the same year, Gerhardt's brother Christian died of the plague at 31 years old. In 1642, Gerhardt went to Berlin, where he became family tutor in the house of Andreas Berthold, an attorney. In the Christian atmosphere of this home, his gift of song began to develop and bear fruit. Many of his hymns were published by Johann Krieger in 1648. At eight, in 1651, at the age of 44, he received his first pastorate in the village of Mittenwalde. Mittenwalde was still reeling from the effects of the Thirty Years' War. Both armies had been through the village time and time again, burning and plundering what little was left. Few houses remained, and the fields had grown wild. The bloodiness of the war was now over, but hunger had taken its place. The young pastor felt the, felt the same poverty as the rest of the people in the village. <laughs> On February 11th, 1655, at the age of 48, Gerhardt married Anna Maria Berthold. She was a young 32. She was the daughter of Andreas Berthold, where Gerhardt had lived in Berlin. Very quickly, their hearts were broken when their first child, Anna Maria, died before she was a year old. In 1657, Gerhardt accepted a call as the third assistant pastor of the Church of St. Nicholas in Berlin. He continued his hymn writing and became recognized as the most popular preacher in the city. At this time, there was a bitter strife between the Lutheran and the Reformed clergy in Berlin. Because Gerhardt wasn't as harsh as others in condemning the opposition, he gained the respect and esteem of many of the leaders of the Reformed group. But in 1662, the elector, Friedrich Wilhelm the Great, a Calvinist, issued an edict which forbade Lutheran and Reformed ministers to attack each other's doctrine and confession. Kitty. Kitty. Bad kitty. Oh. Okay. Um. Gerhardt believed that signing, signing the document would be a compromise of faith. When he and other ministers refused to sign, they were deposed from office by the government. Just before this unfortunate occurrence, he had lost three of his five children. Now a son died, and his wife was seriously ill. Because of the pleadings of the people of Berlin, the town council, and even the elector's wife, Gerhardt was offered reinstatement in 1667, 
but he refused because it was only under the condition that he would preach according to the edict. For three years he was without a position and had to rely on the gener re generosity of members of his former congregation. During this period his wife died in 1668, leaving him only a six-year-old son. In May of 1669 he was called to the office of Archdeacon at Lubin. Here he worked for seven years with much success until his death in 1676. He died with this prayer on his lips. Uh, well, it's in German because he was German. Uh, the translation is, Our death can't kill us, but it takes our spirit out of thousands of troubles. It closes the door of bitter sufferings and opens the way through which we enter heaven's joys. Why should cross and trial grieve me is where that was taken from. Um, Paul Gearhart was an excellent pastor and the best hymn writer the church had ever known. He wrote a total of 133 hymns. Many of the outward circumstances of his life were gloomy, but his hymns are full of cheerful trust. They show a great faith in a God who always gives his grace to those who are through, who are his through faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Paul Gerhardt hymns in the Lutheran hymnal are on lots of different pages and also in the Missouri Synod German hymnal. Um, in 1648, Johann Kruger, the cantor of St. Nicholas Church, published a hymn entitled Proxis Piatatis Melica with the subtitle The Practice of Christian Piety. Gottslikite. Gottslikite. In Christian and Comforting Hymns by Dr. Martin Luther, along with his true followers and confessors of the pure evangelical teaching. Many of Gearhart's hymns were first published in this hymnal. This became the most printed hymnal in history and probably began to shape the Lutheran church into the singing church. In 1666, Johann Ebeling, Krieger's successor, printed the first complete collection of Gearhart's hymns. Paul Gearhart's hymns were popular from their inception, but in the late 1700s, rationalism couldn't stand his complete dependence on God. The texts of his hymns were either butchered or completely left out of the hymnals of this era. However, the Lutheran, the Lutheran confessional revival of the 19th century rediscovered Gerhardt's beautiful hymns. His hymns have exerted much influence on English hymnody. The singing of German hymns made such an impression on John Wesley, 1703-1791, the founder of Methodism, <sighs> that he translated 37 of them into English, including three of Gerhardt's. Gerhardt's influence on Christian or on English hymnody continued into the 19th century, when many of his hymns were translated, especially by John Kelly, Kitty, and Catherine Winkworth. Ninety of his hymns have been translated into English by 50 people. His hymns greatly influenced the faith and piety of the early Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. They were dearly loved. Many people were able to recite all the verses of many of his hymns. It's interesting that almost every hymn that C. F. W. Walter and George Stickhart quote in their sermons is a hymn by Paul Gerhardt. The Missouri Synod was influenced as much by the gospel in the hymns of Paul Gerhardt as it was um, as by the theology of Martin Luther. Today his hymns remain a source of joy and comfort in Christ for all who take them to heart. In the oldest painting of Paul Gerhardt, which hangs in his last church in Lubin, Germany. He is pointing to Christ the crucified because that is exactly what his hymns do. They direct us to our savior, Jesus Christ. And that is the end of that reading. Thumbs up for Paul Gearhart. Hmm.